In case anybody couldn't hear me over there, I'm Natalie Early. I'm the president of the PTO here at Dominion High School. And I want to welcome you all here tonight. And uh, we have a great agenda of tours throughout the school to show you lots of activities that the school offers here. Um, what I'm going to talk about is what the PTO does here at Dominion. It mostly supports all the after school activities and we, we support the teachers and staff here. This past fall, we've been supporting the staff and teachers through breakfast at the beginning of the school year. We had a lunch in November, we had a cookie exchange in December, and we just had another grab and go breakfast for the staff. So we are really just trying to keep everybody fueled up for their school days here because we know that the days are long for everybody. So we're doing that. And coming up for Valentine's Day, we're going to do a slice of hearts pizza day. So the kids, kids and parents can send a little Valentine to teachers also if they would like to. It's kind of it's kind of a funny thing to do for high school kids, but we're hoping that the kids and the parents will enjoy doing something like that, especially for their favorite teachers and anything like that. So um, we are having a social event. Our Athletic Booster Club is having a social event on March 5th at um, Velocity Wings in the Great Falls Shopping Center. It's just, it's gonna have um, a silent auction. We have one big fundraiser a year at Dominion and it is our golf outing. And that's where we raise the bulk of our money. And the rest of the money we raise is all through membership. And so um, when you come over to Dominion, you can sign up. If you're already a member here at Dominion, you can sign up and pay to be part of the, be part of the PTO. And that helps to fund all of the stuff we do for the teachers, staff, students, and the support that we give to the after school groups and everything. So um, our golf outing will be May 13th. It is during the day. If you are a golfer and would like to participate, there's a, there's a website called teeitupfortitans.com and you can go out there and find a group of four people if you'd like to and come out and enjoy a day of golf. Or if you would like to get involved in the golf outing and raising money for PTO, you can reach out to atlas at dominionhigh.com and we can get you in touch with somebody that you can help plan the great activity for the day. Um, membership, if membership information is on the agenda. If you'd like to sign up to receive our newsletter, contribute any donation for um, the activities we do. We'd love it. Um, we'd lo we can't wait to have all of you join us next year here at Dominion. Um, I'm going to give a brief treasurer's report. Um, our treasurer wasn't able to make it today. Um, as of February 3rd, we've had revenue brought in of $137,387. We've had expenses of $94,000 and we have net revenues of $43,000. A lot of that money will be brought over to cover fundraising that the, the um, after school groups have done. It comes, through the, it comes through the PTO and then it goes right back into the after school groups that have done the fundraising and any of the sports teams that have done their fundraising. So that it will be there. And our next general meeting, which we haven't quite set the date for, I don't think. We did? No, okay. we did. You're right. We You're right. Okay, I didn't think so. Um, it's going to be a book talk. And so we have a book selected on Enrique's journey by Sonia Nazario. If you want to join us, we'd love to have you. It's going to be a great book talk. It'll be facilitated most likely by one of the teachers here at Dominion. And we'll just do it like a book club. And we'll just sit and talk about, you know, the different things. I think it's a good book that I think you'd enjoy. It's definitely relevant to, you know, Dominion High School and where we are today and everything. So other than that, I think it's anything. If anybody has any questions, um, you can ask now or you can come see me. We have a PTO table back there with Lauren, one of our secretaries, and Lauren, our other, Laura, our other secretary is back there. And we can also collect any donations or anything tonight if you'd like to, or you can sign up to volunteer if you're an existing parent now, or just get information on Atlas. We have a form that you can take home with you to learn more about us. So anyway, all right. The topic we think is particularly relevant right now because Loudoun County Public Schools has become extraordinarily more diverse over the 20 years that Dominion High School has existed. And our school, in my opinion, is the most diverse high school in Loudoun County of the 19 high schools that we have. And there is genuine socioeconomic, cultural, linguistic, and religious diversity to a maximum level in our school as a professional who's worked here for 20 years and a parent of two daughters who have graduated from Dominion High School, I would not want my daughters to have attended any other school than this one. In fact, my wife and I don't live in Tutton territory, but we made sure that our daughters went to school here. 
because it's really that important to us that our daughters grew up in, first of all, a high school that's doing a great job to prepare its students for the, their future, but also in a community that is diverse <coughs> and enriching. So the reason we have selected Enrique's journey is that it's a story, a powerful story of a young person's life that was quite different than most of ours who have uh, been born and have lived all of our lives either in Northern Virginia or somewhere in, in the United States. And the book is quite powerful and it helps us grapple with the, um, the, the opportunities that are presented when we work together in a diverse community that provides a platform for every single student to be actively engaged, to be part of an enriching community, and that every single student can do that regardless of the past experiences that they have in their life, regardless of the differential resources they have in their life right now. Because our students truly, when we talk about diversity, one of the things that makes our school really unique and really powerful is that our students have grown up with such disparate experiences. It makes it a really, really awesome place to be because we don't all come with the same point of view and perspective. We bring different strengths, talents, beliefs, and interests to the table. And so that's actually exactly why we have asked you to come tonight. And we're so grateful that so many of you have joined us. Every one of Loudoun County's 19 public high schools have, um, have certain features. We all teach Algebra 1. Every one of them has a person called the principal. Um, 17 of the 19 have athletic programs. Two of the 19 are alternative schools and they don't have their own athletic programs. These 17 have bands, marching bands. And we happen to have some really good athletic teams and a really awesome band. But all of the schools across Loudoun County Public Schools have those features, and many of the other schools across Northern Virginia do, and the country do as well. Tonight, we're not showcasing those things that everybody else has, that your high school may have had. Tonight, we're showcasing things that nobody else has. Maybe some other schools have one or two of these eight things we're about to show you, but no other school probably anywhere in the country has this combination of unique experiences available to its students. The reason these experiences, which are again among many, many others, these are not the only ones, we're highlighting these tonight because they are exemplary. In other words, they embody or they are examples of communities, smaller communities in a pretty large high school of 1,500 students. In a high school that large, every student has to find a home base, has to find a passion, has to find a smaller community of people with whom they can identify. That's what gives them their fullest opportunity to emerge as true titans. So, these organizations ranging from athletic programs to a choir to a band, uh, those are really important things. And the fact that we're not showcasing them tonight has nothing to do with their importance. They're immensely important, but they're also probably familiar to many of you. The eight features that we are showcasing tonight are less familiar, undoubtedly, and maybe completely unfamiliar to most of you. But what happens in these eight programs at Dominion High School is that small groups of students ranging from anywhere from a dozen to a hundred get really, really engaged and become connected to their high school so that they have a group of people here that they could almost call and probably sometimes do call family. That enriches their high school experience immensely. The thing is, over the last two years, we've been distant a lot. And so we realize that not everybody who currently 
has a student attending Dominion High School, and certainly those of you who are about to attend Dominion High School, it might have been really difficult for you to become aware of these eight smaller communities within our school. And we don't want you to go through four years of high school here without knowing that these communities exist. Students, some of you tonight are going to see something or hear something that's going to change your trajectory for the rest of your life. It might be journalism. There's a young man named Kevin Myers who is right now a freshman at the University of Texas at Austin. He's in their journalism program. He had no idea that he was interested in journalism until he got to Dominion High School and he got connected with our athletic department and our broadcast journalism program. The trajectory of Kevin's life has been forever changed by a small community, broadcast journalism, that he became a vital part of. That story will be told over and over again tonight, eight times, and could be told over and over and over again thousands of times by the 5,500 students who graduated from Dominion High School and the 1,500 who are here right now. So our purpose tonight is to help each one of you as current or future Titans to find a community that is you're going to belong to for the next four years, and that community is going to deeply impact your life if you will let it. These eight, op eight opportunities aren't the only ones. There are a small number of them, but these happen to be very unique to our school community and very, very powerful. So we're going to divide you up into eight groups. We have a ton of volunteers from our National Honor Society. I'm really grateful that they're here. About three or four of them are going to usher you around the building in a logical, sequential way. In about six minute clips, you're gonna hear some testimonials from these eight different programs. And there'll be two or three minutes of travel time in between each presentation. At the end of our time together, one group that you may want to see perform will perform in our cafeteria at 8.30 if you're interested. After you see them and hear from them, you probably will be. We have a dance team that is literally uh, a recent national champion. And they could very well be this year's National Dance Association champion. And they're going to perform at 8.30 in the cafeteria for whomever would like to see them. Their performances last about five minutes. Today, um, I am Mrs. Gussman, and this is uh, Mr. Gussman here. I'm the coach, and he's the co-coach or assistant coach for the speech and debate team. Um, I have been involved in speech and debate since Dominion opened, and I'm very honored to continue to be the coach of the speech and debate team. Um, I'm going to speak very briefly about some of the benefits of speech and debate, starting with some of the quotes you see up here on the board, because the biggest benefit is the changes and improvement it makes to individual students. As you can see from some of these quotes, these people talked about how much they went from a position of maybe not hardly speaking at all to being able to speak on the national stage. And some of them, the young lady with the ribbon there, she's a national award winner. Our own experience in speech and debate is we have taken students who are very shy, we've taken students with speech impediments, and through their involvement in speech and debate, they learn to find their voice and speak their truth, and it made a difference in their life. Um, <clears throat> as you can see here, making the case, it improves student engagement, boosting confidence, and joining a speech and debate program can put a student on an entirely different path. And making it a bit relevant to today, the fact that we've gone, especially appointment important as kids uh, transition back into school, back into a full schedule, back into full activities, that they enhance their ability to speak and interact with each other. Um, I have folders at the front that talk about some of the benefits. You can here see some of the famous people both on the political side and the entertainment side, who were part of speech and debate. You can pick up either one of these folders talking about the impact in terms of scores. And uh, just an additional thing, there was a student from Thomas Jefferson, this young man, Liam Reeser, who has made the Youth Senate program here in Virginia. 
who is speech and debate, does student congress 13th in the national area. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to turn it over now to Brooke, who will talk a little bit about the mock trial club. And then I would like you to, I have two of my students here, Pavan and Rohan, um, can give you their uh, ideas and their take on speech and debate and answer any questions that you can have. Go ahead. Okay. Hi guys. Um, I don't know if any of you guys know me, but uh, my name is Brooke Freshman. I am the uh, president of the uh, newly created Mock Trial Club at Dominion. I'm a new student at Dominion this year, and I'm in 11th grade. Uh, just a little description of our club. I know some of you aren't really familiar with it. Um, our Mock Trial team will be coached by uh, the Honorable Judge Lori Ann Sinclair Taylor and the Honorable Judge Matthew Snow. Uh, they are current judges in Loudoun County General District Court. Um, so our mock trial team will be issued a real life court case that occurred in the past and uh, Judge Taylor and Judge Snow will place us on prosecution and defense teams. Um, they'll coach us and prepare us to go up against other local high school mock trial teams in a statewide competition. Um, I know last year and this year it's on Zoom but usually it would be in an actual courthouse. Um, each team will basically go to court and present their cases and then a final ruling will be issued by current state attorneys and real life judges. Uh, your role in the club could be an attorney, witness, or a paralegal, however involved you want to be. And um, if you are interested in a career associated with law, or if you want to go to law school, this club is perfect experience and training. And um, it also looks great on a college application or a resume. I know that when I did this at my old school, I absolutely loved it, and it strengthened my love for law, and it really kind of strengthened my desire to want to go to law school. And um, yeah, I really just wanted to start something here at this new school because I think it's really great. And uh, just some meeting info, we'll probably meet about once a week. We've already started meeting for about 45 minutes to an hour via Zoom. And um, you can contact me if you're interested. I have my um, email on the flyers. I'd really encourage you to take a flyer even if you might not be interested. And um, you can also contact our Vice President, Kaylin Jones. And yeah, the Schoology code is also on here where we post most of our updates and um, that kind of stuff. And yeah, thank you for listening. If all else fails, I'm the just the loose connection. I'm the sponsor, but so if you were just remember Mrs. Gusman, I can get you in touch with both mock trial and speech and debate. Um, does anybody have any questions? If not, please come talk to our students, to Brooke, myself, and if you wish to take some of the literature or the benefits of speech and debate, then please do so. Something that Mrs. Gusman did not really make clear. Sorry about my voice. Speech and debate is not a club. You gotta understand that. We are the originator of VHSL, which means a very big deal. Um, it is, we are, it's both athletic and, and, and um, academic. We are the academic side of it. And I will tell you, the students will say it's also the physical side of it because we can start from six in the morning and go on till six, and, uh, six at night in terms of a tournament at nationals, it's a lot more fun, but so I just want to let you know that getting VHSL on your resume, very big deal. You and also can earn a letter, just as I see that you have earned, probably earned a letter in swim. Yes, yeah. you can earn a letter in speech and debate. You can see that we did take regions, uh, the school year before the pandemic hit, <laughs> <laughs> and so those are some of the various trophies and awards we have won. We debate both locally, we debate in VHSL that goes all the way to states, and we also compete in two leagues that go home. Well, I'm Mrs. Rogers, I'm one of the social studies teachers. Um, you probably want to have me to your senior. I teach mostly government, but um, I also teach elective and global social issues, but you should definitely join the Global Ambassadors Club when you are a freshman. Uh, this club's been expanding the global perspectives of Dominion students since 2010. And some of the ways we do that, um, we do a lot of kind of philanthropic work. Uh, basically, we try to do a big fundraiser every year. So we've done you know, a 5K uh, walk for water one year. Um, I'll tell you about some of the other fundraisers we've done more recently. And the thing that we do that really gets students excited and a lot of attention is we um, have forged partnerships with a number of schools abroad. And pre-COVID, we did a lot of exchanges, and we actually bring students from all over here at the same time for a big summit every year. 
Uh, but we have managed to shift those to kind of virtual activities that the students have found really rewarding as well. And so I'll turn things over now to uh, Jacob and Lily, our club president and vice president, and they can tell you more about these activities. So yeah, I'm Jacob, president of Global Ambassadors this year. Um, so last year, one of the main fundraisers we did was called Miles for Cambodia, um, and it was raising money for the Landmine Relief Fund, which is based in Siem Reap, Cambodia, and we've actually worked with when we had a trip to Cambodia. Um, so the Landmine Relief Fund, they do really important work of clearing landmines in Cambodia while also working with, for education, sustainable development, and a bunch of other really cool stuff, and they helped a lot with COVID. So we raised about $1,500 for them last year, which was awesome. Um, that's Bill Morris, the founder, and he actually spoke at our virtual summit last year as well. So. Yeah, um, this year we partnered with the Muslim Student Association and um, we hosted an item drive for Afghan refugees that came to Northern Virginia um, over the summer and this past fall. So it was really cool, it was successful, and we got to help out. So it was a great experience. Yep. Yeah, and we collected a lot of really important personal hygiene and winter coats and other really important items for Afghan refugees, and it was a really cool experience. So, and then from 2012 to 2019, we hosted students from around the world and held an annual in-person international summit, the Loudoun International Youth Leadership Summit. Um, here's a brief video from 2017 that was made by Loudoun County that sort of explains it. So you guys were the host organization for the entire county? Yeah, we, okay. we founded it here in 2012, and it was so cool that the other schools were like, oh, we want to do it too. And so it sort of grew, and every year other schools would, uh, would join us in it. I'm very proud to welcome you to the 6th Annual Loudoun International Youth Leadership Summit. This year is the largest summit we have ever had the privilege to host, with 25 different delegations from 22 countries around the world. The Loudoun International Youth Leadership Summit is about bringing together perspectives from around the world to highlight student leaders who will one day create real change around the issues we explore, ranging from racial and ethnic divisions to migration and refugees. Looking past expectations and assumptions to embrace a variety of viewpoints is central to what this summit stands for. Our theme is Reconcile the Past, Shape the Future, Building Peace Within and Among Nations. There are issues in this world we cannot permit ourselves to be indifferent to. Today, you are students, but tomorrow, you are leaders. Leaders who will change the world. Um, so that's LOILS. And then obviously COVID, we couldn't do in person, but we did pivot and? Um, we did goals last year. So in 2021, we hosted a virtual summit um, with a bunch of different schools all over the world. Um, that we joined through Google Meet and we were able to collaborate and make friendships and it was a really cool experience and you'll see more in this video. <laughs> delegates for being a part of the Goals Conference. We are lucky enough to have students from France, Singapore, Florence, Italy, India, Sicily, Italy, Indonesia, Poland, the United Kingdom, Costa Rica, South Korea, the United States, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Goals place delegates in six different fictional countries each with its own unique strengths and weaknesses. The purpose of this imaginary world was to challenge young leaders to take thoughtful and creative action against some of the world's most pressing issues while avoiding preconceived notions. Through the simulation, delegates were able to gain fresh perspectives and insight on a variety of issues, as well as learn from and connect with their peers across the globe. We were blessed to hear inspirational stories and important perspectives from four different speakers throughout the conference. Jillian Weber provided delegate. So and then it goes into the speakers that we had and also delegate testimony. So if you want to watch that full video, it is on our website, which is goals2021.org. And then we also have our new website for this year, liyls2022.org. Um, but yeah, so goals was a really cool experience. Um, <laughs> Um, so this year, we are expanding our virtual summit to include over 20 international delegations, so we're more than doubling it. 
Um, and we're also including all of the other Loudoun County schools, so it's going to be much, much bigger. Um, LOILF2022.org if you want more information on that. But it's going to be a really cool hybrid virtual and hopefully in person with the local delegates experience that we're really looking forward to, really working hard on, and a great way to get involved with the club. Um, so there's no ninth or tenth graders in here, right? All right. Um, well, if you were a ninth or tenth grader, then you could apply to be a delegate to our international summit this year. So you have that. Well, hopefully when you got to here, you'll have an in-person one. But yeah, so how much time do we have? Yeah. What, uh, what questions do you have? Or do you guys have any older siblings or, or friends or neighbors that have ever hosted a, an international student for uh, one of the summits or an exchange? I've hosted a student from France and Singapore. Um, so that was, and I was supposed to host a student from Taiwan in 2020 before that all got canceled. What's the current status of all that? Is it all online for the next for the Yeah, for the definitely year? for the rest of the school year. And uh, we, you know, as the numbers go down, we keep getting these glimmers. I hope like, well, maybe we can start thinking about it. I remember in November, the South African teacher emailed me as the numbers are down in both countries. And we both felt like we jinxed it because the next week, I'll work on it. And, uh, so our, you know, this has been a good way to keep in touch with our partners. The students have found it engaging and rewarding, but uh, we are definitely, it's also a good way to maintain those connections because everybody is eager to uh, to have it back in person again too, so. And you, you guys have regular correspondence because uh, everyone overseas and you, yeah. you just have it. Uh, Check out the dance team. We are the Dominion High School dance team. I'm Mr. K, I'm one of the coaches for the dance team. Uh, Mrs. K, she's leaving right now, but. Mr. A is another coach and also the school sponsor for this team. Um, and I'll just mention this now before I forget, I always leave it to last and like I rush to say it. But we have this QR code and I'll put this piece of paper right here. If you scan it, it just goes to a Google form and you could just leave an email if you want to find out more about the dance team after our presentation. So um, to kick it off, we have our dance team that's going to perform a small piece of their nationals routine. So we've been competing at a national level. This is going to be our 11th year. Um, we are 16 years in as a dance team. We started in 2006. We are, we've been a co-ed team all the way through other 16 years, so we hope we can continue being a co-ed team. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so our team, um, our officers, our uh, captains and co-captains, if you guys can raise your hand real quickly, um, they put in a lot of their time to um, prepare this, or like put together the choreography for this routine. So everything that you see that um, Dominion performs, uh, we do our own choreo and our mixes and everything. So it's done within the team. We don't buy our choreo and mixes. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to the dance team and they can showcase a little piece of uh, our national piece um, for our nationals routine. But what we would like for you guys to do, if you guys can stay in about 30 minutes from now, we're gonna perform our entire routine for, for everybody that's um, able to come back. So we would love if you guys can come back, help cheer us on. Um, like I said, we're in about a month from now, we'll be competing this in Orlando. And um, right now we hold one uh, national uh, championship title back from 2019. Um, and that was in large varsity hip hop. So. We, uh, yeah, we're just trying our best and working our hardest to um, hopefully return with a really strong routine for this year. Um, so I probably would like maybe some of our officers to um, kind of talk a little bit about the team. Um, so I'm gonna just hand it off and maybe one of you guys can say a few things. Uh, I'm Devin. Uh, what you just saw was something that I help put together with the help of everybody else, like our coaches and our other officers. But I mean, when I started this team, my freshman year, I didn't really have very much experience and we still went on and we won. So yeah. you don't have to have a lot of experience to come and join. You'll definitely learn along the way. You'll make some good connections, make some good friends. And it's really just a fun place to be. It's not super stressful. So if you just want to come out have fun, you should try out. Yes. 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 Uh, my name is Anika. I'm a senior on the team. I've been on for four years. Um, one thing that this team has taught me with a lot is confidence. I think when, when I was a freshman, I was very, very shy. I didn't talk at all. But now I'm a senior, so I, like, I've grown with the people that I'm with now. So it's, it's been 
about to get onto Dominion, you don't have to start as a middle schooler to make it on the team like we mentioned before. You can come in with no experience, but what we are looking for is somebody that's willing to learn and, and wanting to put their energy into something positive. And that's all we're looking for, really. Um, you, you, you can be the most talented person, but if you don't have that drive and you want to like really push yourself, then you know um, you, you may not really this might not be the team for you, but if you love really pushing yourself and like wanting to do something like fun and you know something you can look back on and be proud of, um, that's that's what this team is all about. So I hope you guys can you know come back in about 25 minutes from now and um, check out our whole entire routine and help cheer us on. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. And if anybody uh, wants to, like I said, um, you can scan this piece of paper and then just leave an email so we can uh, send you some information later on. Yeah, all right, cool. So welcome in. This is the Avenue Campus um, room. I am Miss Benson. I'm one of the school counselors here at Dominion, um, but I also am one of the support people um, for our AVID program. We also are joined by our campus team as well, um, so I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Winfrey. I am also a school counselor here, and I am the counselor for campus. My name is Mr. Yupanki. Uh, students call me Mr. Y, and I am a dual Roman English teacher, as well as a campus teacher. So while we have two different names, um, AVID and Campus, we have a very similar mission and we have a very similar goal. Our goal is to help our students, um, minority students, low socioeconomic students, students who um, don't have as many resources to help them through the college application process, first generation students. Um, and our goal is to get them to a four year institution. Um, and you'll hear from some of our AVID students tonight as well about their experiences in the program. Um, but we help guide them through not only the college application process, but also financial aid. Um, and we work very closely as two programs. Um, and so AVID, it works as a cohort system. So you'll come in as ninth grade students, you'll stay with the same group of students the whole time, all the way through your senior year, you stay within the program. Um, so it becomes a really nice community and a really nice family for, for our students. But I also, we have campus, so I'm gonna let Mr. Y and, and Ms. Winfrey talk a little bit about that too. So uh, both AVID and campus were very similar in the way we do things, so we meet our students um, as eighth graders and we encourage them to apply to either program and then once you know we send out decisions we're together for the next four years during these four years freshman year we learn all about how to be a strong high school student be self-sufficient maybe than your average uh, high school freshman and we spend all four years really just equipping our students with the tools trying to get rid of as many obstacles as possible that may come in the college application season as you all know, applying to college in the United States is a very difficult process. You think about the word FAFSA, that's probably something that it's tough to complete on your own. So uh, it's something that we work together because, uh, like Ms. Me uh, Benson mentioned, we have students that come from all these different diverse backgrounds, and we try to take those obstacles that these backgrounds present so that students are able to um, get accepted into the colleges, but also be successful um, in their programs and later on in life. So we are joined by two of our AVID seniors tonight. Um, so I'm gonna let them tell a little bit about their themselves and their story um, so you can hear from them. You please take it over. Okay, I'm Elizabeth, I'm a senior. Um, I've been in AVID for five years. I, I joined AVID in eighth grade at Seneca. There was an AVID program at Seneca before. And so, when I was in eighth grade, I decided I wanted to go to college. I'm a first generation student, so I've never been through the whole process. So, I've been helping through the whole process, especially here through my senior year. It's been like really rough going through the process. And I got accepted into college, so. Yeah. Um, my name is Ingrid, and I started Avid in freshman year. Uh, Avid has helped me a lot, trying to focus and um, stay organized with my 
my notes and all of my work. Um, it has helped me um, get into the college of my dreams, which is um, George Mason. Um, so like you heard from Ingrid, we don't just help you at the very end with the college part, we're helping from day one, right? So if you're struggling with academics, you don't know how to spread an email to your teacher to ask for help, you don't know who to go to to get support for something, your Avid or Campus support team is here to help you do that. So your student will have an additional level of trusted adults in the building from day one, because we would actually hopefully get to meet you a little bit earlier on so that they could put a face in the name. So our applications are both online. And what will happen is that Mr. Clark for the campus program actually goes over to Seneca in March to meet with the eighth graders. He gives this whole presentation that he does. And then he'll say the application is open now. Um, and then Ms. Benson will go over for the AVID program and do a very similar presentation talking about what the benefits of the program are, what it will look like in your schedule for next year. Um, and then we would review those applicants. And if your student's interested, they should tell their counselor at Seneca because that counselor will then put it in during course selection and they'll flag it for us and know like this is a kid who wants to be one of our programs. Let's make sure we find their application in the system. Can we help them during like resource or something? That's a really good question. So campus is your study hall. So the campus program is a student's Titan time. However, AVID is a separate class. So AVID would take up one of your electives in your schedule. So if you have a student who has the dream of like taking specific classes for all four years, campus might be a better option because you have a study hall regardless. And so we would just take up and you would just be with Mr. Y and myself in this room for that time period. But if they're like, I don't really know, like if you have to give a credit, they would go and they could apply to AVID or they could apply to both and we'll just sit down as a team and decide, okay, this student might fit better with this environment, with this teacher, and they fit better with us in this environment. Other fun facts about joining <laughs> campus or AVID. We go to field trips. In normal years. In COVID. So, in the past we visited many colleges. Colleges love having AVID and campus visits. Um, we go, we get a very special tour. We get to go into the cafeterias for free. We dine literally in the places where the students will be dining in four, for the next four years. Freshman 15 and all. But, uh, yeah, that's one fun fact. I think you guys all want for us to Fingers crossed for normal year where we can do field trips next year. Thank you for visiting. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, how is everybody doing today? I'm so glad y'all got brave the rain and came on out. We're so excited to have you here. My name is Kevin Throckport, and I'm the engagement coordinator here at Dominion High School, and my entire job is really encompassed in providing support for students no matter what subject area they're in. So some of the things that we're going to highlight today in the circle, Ms. Kim and I, we're going to talk to you about some of the support centers that are available here on campus, and then also... Uh, go through some of the things that you can do during the study hall and uh, things along those lines. So if you look over here, the first study hall, we have, the first area we have is actually room 501. It's Titan Academic Growth and Support. We call it TAG. And it used to be called AP Support, but we rebranded it because we realized any student that comes in always gets help. So we want to make sure every student feels welcome coming in to get some help. And we have all sorts of teachers in there, seven blocks of the day. We have NHS tutors available for immediate assistance. We have supplies. And you can make it a part of your regular Titan time routine. If you say, hey, listen, I need some history help before this, before this test, head over to TAGS, go see Mr. Eisenmanger. He's in there, second block, and he can always help you out. All right, we have a variety of teachers that are in there, a variety of tutors. And the coolest thing about TAGS is that really, they can meet pretty much any need you have uh, whichever class you have, and we'll find a way. We'll find a way to make sure you're successful. But one of the things that we really want to encourage you to do as you start off in your freshman year is take advantage of this unique support system that we have here for you. We're the only high school in Loudoun County that offers all three of these support centers, and so we really encourage you to do the homework at home that you can do by yourself, but the paper that you might need some help on, the extra physics support, the math support, utilize your Titan time to get help from the math teachers or the physics teachers or the history teachers. I so appreciate that you guys came out tonight. It means a lot. Um, I'm Salma. And I'm Lauren. Nice to meet you. And we're going to give you a, a stand a little bit on Link Crew and the organization at Dominion that really motivates school spirit. So Link Crew, like I said, is a school organization at Dominion that's really set on school, school spirit and kind of easing their transition from middle school to high school a little bit more easier on ninth graders, especially this year with COVID and everything. And so another thing that 
um, is really valuable about the crew is that um, each of the freshmen have their own two leaders that help them mentor or like mentor them throughout the year and that they can look up to them throughout the school year and ask them for advice or ask them any questions that they have. So it's really helpful for them. Um, thank you, even with like all the precautions of COVID and social distancing and masks, we really try to make events like accessible and available to students this year. I know we started off orientation in August with all students coming from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., even three sometimes, just creating those bonds with older students and like gaining more knowledge about high school. Mm -hmm. And so one of the, or well, two of the big events that we had this year were the fall tailgate and Thanksgiving. So the fall tailgate we had before one of the football games and all of the ninth graders were invited to listen to music and play games. We had a bunch of food and they were able to hang out with their peers and also meet or reconnect with the upperclassmen that maybe they haven't seen in a little bit and just hang out with each other. And then we had Thanksgiving this November in the cafeteria we played um, ping pong and had more food. So these events are just a really fun way for them to connect with their peers, connect with people that are older than them, and build those relationships that can help them um, gain trust in upper classes so that they can ask for advice and things like that. So some benefits that we felt that were really important to mention about being a Linker leader is that you really get to form those relationships with younger students, even though you're the one giving them advice and your expertise about Dominion and stuff. You really get to like, it just feels so nice when you're walking the hallway and they like acknowledge you and you're like, hi, hi, and you know, and you just feel more a valued part of the community since you're like aiding a younger generation about struggles that you might have had. Mm -hmm. And another thing is that research shows that when ninth graders are more involved or more engaged their freshman year, they tend to have a better high school experience in the long run. So just these little things, being involved, being engaged with one another, um, it really does help them in the long run and it's really valuable for them. So being a Lincoln leader is very helpful for these ninth graders. You personally are a rising senior or junior, you should, I really encourage you to apply. It's really a great organization. They don't focus on your GPA and your grades, even though that is important. They focus on your personality, even the application progress. It's not like it's just a boring, like filling it out. You get to make a video or you do interviews and stuff like that. Um, link through is really like about making a diverse student body a leader. So one link through leader might be like into going into the military and then another one might be going into a four year college. It really, it depends on you and what you make of Link Crew. Mm -hmm. And like what we look for in these Link Crew leaders is just people who have the personality to um, make, the make the freshmen feel comfortable and, you know, get them involved with new things as they're, in, they're getting into this new school, they might be anxious or shy, so yeah, just welcoming them in a good way. Yeah. You can take a picture if you like. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so if there are any questions, we'd love to answer them. Link Crew is a great organization at Dominion. We feel like it really feels full of spirits, and sometimes it's looked at uncool or boring or just something not to do. But then since freshmen come like with fresh, like, fresh minds, you get to really explore and just like ignore that side of <laughs> negativity. Um. I do primary, I do tech all year round. I normally and in stage management. Mm -hmm. And this is Avery. Um, I do the tech theater too, and I do the lights for the shows too. Mm -hmm. So um, this is kind of like a rundown of like just what we've been doing and what we did last year, like during the pandemic, since a lot of the other theater departments had actually closed down except for ours. We'd been like coming in like with like full masks, like some of us with face shields, I was one of those people. And um, we just, totally worked through the um, pandemic like through our own way and so I'm here to talk to you about that. So last year we got involved with um, doing some online shows and um, just like because school wasn't open to do anything and so doing some online shows and then we decided to do a one-off competition which she was a part of and she was a part of I was a part of and essentially it's like you know how sports they go like district regional states. It's like that, but for theater. And we got third in the state last year, which was pretty cool. And then we, um, sorry. And then for the spring last year, we did a cabaret, which was written and directed by Doc here. 
which is essentially just like a showcase of just like what, like how like COVID kind of eh, affected New York. Yeah. Yeah. Affected everything and like how we're all like starting to get back together. That was a time. It was a journey, <laughs> you know, just a journey. Anyways, it was fun. It was a musical, so we um got really invested with like doing like Broadway songs, so that was really cool. And New York accents. In New York accents. I was <laughs> I was pretty damn good, okay? Excuse my language, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, and then this year we decided to do um, Almost Maine, which was, uh, it's, it's a vignette play. We did that earlier in November, it's a vignette play, and that means it's a collection of short stories, all kind of rolled into the same universe. Same town. Same town, it was the same town, you know. And it was, it was really cool, it was really fun, and we learned about, a lot about pacing and that kind of thing. And then um, we were, so, go ahead. Um, and then also, like in the fall, we also did another one act competition. Yeah, we forgot about that. We got fourth in the state in that one. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was like, it was really fun. And we also, like, while we got fourth in the state, we also got first in both districts and regionals. Mm -hmm. And we like met a lot of people, and um, two of my friends got second and third best actor. And then I got. She best. got best actress twice. Yes. Uh, sorry. Um, and then that was a really awesome experience. I got to meet so many different like people and like so many different types of acting and like tech work. And then after that, we were gonna do a radio play, which is like, you know how radio stations have like their scripts and their broadcasting. So it's like you're in this the radio station. I feel like I have to put on my old TV voice. Welcome to journalism. I'm Mr. Schwartz. Um, what we do down here are all the journalism classes. That is my sole responsibility here at Dominion. They are classes that you take. Um, what you see are students who are representative of every type of class that I have here from newspaper journalism and our award-winning dhspress.com news site to our yearbook students who produce the yearbook, which a lot of students think just magically appears, but they put in a lot of work and effort from the photography to the interviewing to the writing to the graphic design to the advertising. We are a self-sustained business with over $30,000 worth of product a year. To Stephen over here, representing broadcast journalism, we did create broadcast journalism for the county here at Dominion. Go tight.